Welcome and thank you uh, for those who have joined my talk. My name is Rabuni Bhomik. I'm a staff scientist at Roche Tissue Diagnostic located in Tucson, Arizona. I develop multiplex assay for tissue and new sample types like 3D spheroids using Roche IHC-ish um, automated staining platform and proprietary dye. Today, I will discuss fluorescent multiplexing of 3D spheroid FFP using Discovery Ultra automated staining instrument and reagent. Um, in this talk, um, I will discuss the entire fluorescent multiplex assay workflow using 3D spheroids and aggregate FFP section as model system. The target is to stain four biomarkers on the same 3D FFP section. First, we identify the biomarker panel and choose the protocols uh, for multiplex staining in our Discovery Automated um, Ultra IHC instrument. I will discuss some of the key parameters needed to optimize uh, multiplex IF stain using Roche proprietary detection kit. Once we stain the multiplex slide, we have to consider what imaging instruments we want to use. Are we going to do a whole slide imaging or multispectral imaging? For successful imaging with Roche proprietary fluorescent dye, I will discuss uh, what key changes are needed in the scanner hardware and software. Finally, I will give some examples of downstream analysis to complete the workflow. For those who are less familiar with the Discovery Ultra instrument, uh, this is an automated staining platform for RUO assay development. It's a high throughput auto stainer that can stain up to 30 slides. The instrument gives reproducible stain, minimizes human error, and saves time. In the top carousel, there are 35 um, dispenser holder. The, in the multiplex stain, some of the dispensers involve um, detection kits, inhibitor, a secondary antibody, um, blocker, counter stain, DAPI. For a complete five-plex stain, you need up to 19 dispensers. The next carousel consists of 30 slide drawers. Each slide has an individual reaction chamber and heating pad underneath the slide. The heating pad plays an important role for the success of five-plex assay. There is a bulk container holding a three to seven uh, liter fluid consisting of liquid cover slip, wash buffer, and CC1, uh, CC2, etc. Finally, there are two buckets um, that holds the waste at the bottom of the instrument. The instrument comes with uh, two proto procedures. One is an RUO Discovery Universal, which is an open procedure with numerous options and you can build your own assay. But around 2016, we actually came up with U-Discovery 5-Plex IF procedure, which is um, semi-locked and easy to use and can generate 5-Plex plus DAPI stain in 10 to 12 hours. Uh, we also provide numerous training and a white paper describing in details how to build a 5-Plex assay. Uh, I will also discuss uh, the filter setting needed in imaging scanner uh, use uh, when using Roche detection chemistry. So here I will briefly uh, discuss the unique uh, detection chemistry of Roche dye. We are trying to do fluorescent multiplexing IHC assay. We are using four Roche proprietary fluorophore and DAPI as counter stain. Each floor comes as separate detection kit, and each detection kit consists of TSA fluorophore and a compatible H2O2 dispenser. The slides are stained by TSA amplification method, which I will describe now. Let us uh, have, for example, we have a tissue with an antigen of interest. We first um, apply primary antibody to seek the antigen, followed by secondary antibody specific uh, to the primary antibody. Here, the secondary antibody is not conjugated uh, with a fluorescent dye, but it is conjugated with an HRP enzyme. The final um, uh, detection readout, uh, we use a uh, Roche detection kit. The TSA fluorophore in the detection kit comes, um, as, um, it comes in an inactive state. When the staining protocol is um, starts, it dispenses the TSA fluorophore and hydrogen peroxide on the tissue. This reacts with the HRP enzyme, 
and uh, converts to a highly reactive state that covalently, covalently binds to the tyrosine residue around the antigen. The excess and unbound antigen reacts with the reaction buffer. And the washing steps um, inbuilt in the protocol removes all the unbound, unnecessary fluorophore. The staining is highly specific. Here is an example of KI67 stained on tonsil uh, using Discovery uh, DCC uh, kit. So we are looking, here is an animated cartoon of um, serial multiplex IF uh, using tyr tyramide amplification. The schema shows five antigen that we want to stain. The first antigen is detected um, and the fluorophore is deposited as we described before. This is followed by heat deactivation. The heat deactivation step is extremely important because it deactivates the primary secondary complex. The following washing steps actually removes the primary secondary complex and um, unbound fluorophore, leaving behind only the fluorescent dye around the antigen of interest. The next step, um, we target the second uh, biomarker and we deposit DCC followed by heat deactivation. The process continues and we deposit red 610, Psi 5, and FAM, um, on which um, deposits around um, biomarker 3, 4, 5. Finally, in the last step, we do counter stain DAPI. The fluorescent sequence um, is uh, locked in this procedure for ease of use. So now that we understand how the instrument and the assay works, let us understand the assay strategy for uh, the 3D spheroid sections. The samples that we selected were chosen from two most widely studied cancer indication, NSCLC and CRC. The biomarker panel chosen for NSCLC are um, EGFR, TTF1, uh, ALK, and CK7, whereas for CRC, we chose MSH2, MSH6, BRAF, and CK20. We also went ahead and chose the antigen, um, the antibody fluorophore pairing. Uh, there are a lot of optimization that has to be done, um, but this is a start. Finally, we also have to look at the um, staining pattern uh, of each biomarker. For that, we run chromogenic stain with an on-market product and look at the staining pattern and um, and expression um, in the nuclear membrane and cytoplasm. We upload the samples on Discovery Ultra and uh, choose the REO 5-plex uh, protocol and also um, load the recommended antibody and dispensers um, to initiate the run. The protocol automatically conducts um, DPAR antigen retrieval and cell conditioning, followed by four sequential stain uh, with three heat deactivation uh, in between. Once the process is complete, we get four plex slide um, um, and at the end of the process. So why are we using 3D spheroids and aggregates as a model system? Recently, we sh see a shift uh, from using um, 2D to 3D. Uh, 2D monolayers by now we know are flat, rigid, uh, and grows on synthetic surface. There is an absence of cell extracellular matrix interaction and cell-cell interaction, and they have poor performance on preclinical drug sensitivity study and shows high failure rate. The industry is moving towards 3D spheroids, aggregates, uh, organoids, assembloids, and uh, because they mimic solid tumor with spatial uh, configuration, has heterogeneity, shows gene expression. Uh, they have long-term growth, and sometimes you can do extended um, time course studies. Um, they have superior performance with drug efficacy, sensitivity, and resistance. And uh, more recently, organoids are developed from patient-derived solid tumors for preclinical drug studies. So in this multiplexing, the key components are uh, we took four biomarkers for NSCLC spheroids, um, the ALK, um, 
um, identified with Psi-5, EGFR with Rodamin 6 g TTF1 with RED610, and CK7 with FAM. For CRC, the BRAF was identified with uh, Rodamin 6 g Fluorophore, MSH2 with um, DCC, MSH6 with FAM, and CK20 with uh, RED610. We use the same antibodies and dispensers for chromogenic and multi multiplex uh, fluorescent uh, assay. We optimized um, the NSCLC and CRC uh, on FFP tissues first, and then we replicated the same parameters on 3D FFP sections. The cell lines that, that were used uh, for NSCLC are H2228 and um, H1975. For CRC, the cell lines are HT29 and KM12. Finally, we did image quantitation like uh, signal intensity, cell number, and co-localization. The key optimization parameters involve antibody fluorophore pairing, primary antibody concentration, primary antibody incubation time, and also morphology and staining concordance um, of fluorescent multiplex slide with chromogenic plus staining. On the imaging side, we had to consider how to limit autofluorescence, low bleed through between adjacent channel, robust DAPI signal for optimal stain um, recognition and segmentation, because the optimum segmentation will help uh, downstream uh, analysis. <clears throat> The uh, workflow stream uh, starts with um, in, uh, in NSCLC and CRC FFP tissue, where we optimized antibody fluorophore pairing, the fluoros for fluorescent uh, stain optimization, epitope study, and staining concordance. And then we transferred uh, the protocol um, and tested it on NSCLC and CRC 3D spheroid aggregates followed by uh, checking the concordance of the staining, and finally uh, doing multispectral imaging and image analysis using a Vector3 platform from Acquia Biosciences. <clears throat> Here is an example of chromogenic single-plex stain on colorectal tissue. You can see nucleus stain of MSH2 and MSH6, cytoplasmic uh, stain of CK20, and uh, diffuse membrane and cytoplasmic stain, uh, BRAF V600E. We tested uh, each um, biomarker on 3D FFP. Here is an example of CK7, ALK, EGFR, and TTF1 on H2228 um, spheroids, and CK20, MSH2, BRAF V600E, and MSH6 on HT29 spheroids. For antibody selection and stain optimization, several steps has to be considered uh, for multiplexing stain. We have to play various optimization parameters. For example, we look at antibody incubation time. Uh, we try to test the anti antibodies that are already available in the dispenser. We start with single-plex dab stain and check for the staining pattern. Um, the optimum staining can be increased or decreased. Um, uh, for example, you can see in ALK, we have increased uh, from 16 minutes to 20 minutes. For CK7, we decreased it um, to eight minutes. Another option is antibody titration study. If the dab stain is too dark, uh, we have to dilute the antibody till we get an optimum signal intensity and staining pattern. And then we can use that dilution to do a fluorescent multiplexing, which is much more sensitive. Epitope study and fluorophore uh, pairing is another important parameter. Heat deactivation plays a very important role in, in multiplexing success. Um, the heat deactivation um, is not only uh, removes the primary secondary complex, it actually acts as a mini antigen retrieval. So here in the schema, you can see the biomarker in position one does not get any heat deactivation, whereas biomarker in position five gets four heat deactivation. So an epitope may be destroyed with multiple heat deactivation or it may open up 
and give give better staining uh, pattern um, based on where the epitope is positioned. So we recommend that you test each biomarker in different positions and check for its um, stability with heat deactivation and check for the morphology staining pattern and staining intensity. For TSA amplification, how long you deposit um, the TSA floor actually gives you the signal intensity. And we recommend using uh, 8 to 12 minutes um, in the protocol. Yeah. Here is a sequential multiplexing of NSCLC tissue. Here you can see CK7 cytoplasmic stain, TTF1 nuclear stain. You can see PDF, uh, PDL1 membrane stain, and then diffused um, EGFR stain. And finally, there is the merged image of NSCLC tissue. Um, here is a sequential multiplex stain of CRC tissue showing a CK20 stain, um, very low BRAV V600E, and a nuclear um, stain of MSH2 and MSH6. And finally, the merged image. Once we completed uh, the fluorescent multiplexing, the each biomarker um, were tested with chromogenic um, uh, multiplex uh, slide for concordance study. And, and so you can see the chromogenic uniflex and fluorescent multiplex staining concordance of ALK, EGFR, TTF1, and CK7 in H2228 3D spheroids. Similarly, we also checked for concordance with BRAF V600E, um, MSH2 nuclear stain, MSH6 nuclear stain, and CK7 in HT29 3D spheroid. Finally, here is a merged image of H2228 um, 3D spheroid uh, consisting of four biomarkers and DAPI. Of, and here is an HT29 3D spheroid um, multiplex uh, merged image consisting of MSH2, MSH6, uh, CK20, and BRAFB 600E. Now that we have completed multiplex stain, um, I will uh, discuss some of the characteristics of Roche uh, fluorescent dyes. Most of the Roche fluorescent dyes are uh, tuned uh, to have narrow spectral bandwidth that helps minimizing a signal overlap um, ac across multiple channels, um, except for DCC and DAPI. In addition, we also recommend using narrow band filter compatible to this dye so that it uh, separates discrete six uh, colors within the visible and IR spectrum. The um, filter-based imaging systems like Zeiss, um, Olympus, uh, Hamamatsu, we recommend using the compatible filter set as shown in the table. The Chroma um, actually provides these specialized filter sets um, like Aquafish, Goldfish, uh, Redfish, um, um, Pam, etc. As um, <clears throat> The filters are chosen uh, so that we get this discrete signal of one biomarker per imaging channel. We used um, Vectra 3 from Acquia Biosciences. Um, here also the whole slide imaging uh, utilizes um, filter-based imaging. So in order to accommodate uh, Roche fluorophore in, in an Acquia Vectra 3 system, uh, we recommend uh, taking out one of the filter cubes, say Texas Red, and incorporate Acquia filter cube from Chroma. Um, a step-by-step -step, um, configuration um, of um, Vectra 3 and uh, Inform uh, uh, for um, Roche dyes are available um, in Acquia website. Since we are using um, Roche proprietary fluorophore, we have to build spectral library. For that, we performed singleplex IF with each fluorophore, and also we generated a slide with DAPI. Um, KI67 tonsil slides were prepared, and uh, the 
spectra were captured uh, for each fluorophore using uh, manufacturer's recommendation. And then we saved the spectral library and used it for downstream uh, analysis using INFORM 2.4. The imaging um, helps um, in autofluorescence removal. We get cleaner image. It removes uh, signal bleed through from adjacent channel. For multispectral imaging, actually, in Vectra 3, um, the spectral camera takes images uh, from 420 to 720. Here, each column represents a different filter cubes. Typically, a fluorescent dye shows um, blends through different filter cubes. For example, you can see um, DAPI has, has bled into um, DCC filter cube, and here Red 610 actually has, is showing bleed through in Rudiment 6G as well as Psi 5 filter cube. So with the help of INFORM, uh, the spectral library, the INFORM platform actually um, uh, is able to segregate and assign the signals to the right filters. The autofluorescence, which goes across multiple uh, channels, are also segregated and separated in the final image. So here is a whole slide scan um, and taken in 10x, and we do multispectral imaging of the field of view um, identified uh, at 20x. So here's an example of H2228 image of CK7 stained with FAM. The same um, field of view shows EGFR uh, stained with rhodamine 6 g followed by nuclear stain TTF1 with red 610, and uh, diffused ALK stain with Psi5. Finally, you get the merged image of H2228. I'm going to talk about co-registration of MSH2 and MSH6 in the HD29 sample. Here is the DAPI stain of HD29. You see most of the nucleus are stained with MSH2 and DCC, whereas few of them are stained with MSH6 and FAM. Finally, we get co-localized MSH2, MSH6, um, as you see here. The segmentation is another important parameter that is needed for downstream analysis. In INFORM, the segmentation is very easy, fast, and has a live window to see your segmentation result. We can identify um, clearly all the um, cells in a tightly um, uh, spheroid um, section. The cell segmentation is done by, with the help of DAPI and a membrane marker, and this actually helps in downstream analysis. The other thing that we utilized in INFORM is the co-localization mask. Here you can see the co-localization mask actually showed gray cells as double negative, magenta cells as double positive, cyan cells as MSH2 um, only, and um, single um, MSH6 is represented by the green cell. The immediate analysis uh, was done following cell segmentation and the signal intensity was measured. The adaptive cell segmentation uh, helped us to demarcate the nuclear membrane and cytoplasm as shown in the figure left. We did a signal intensity study of uh, two spheroids, um, H2228 and 1975, uh, representing NSCLC. For CRC, we utilize HD29 and KM12 spheroids. Um, first, what we did was uh, the cell number was counted. A threshold was set for signal intensity. We collected the signal uh, uh, above the threshold and plotted um, the chart. What we um, saw was the signal intensities were different for different biomarkers. For example, we found um, ALK expression in H2228, and um, we did not see it in 1975, which is a non-expressor cell line. We also saw that TTF1 was threefold stronger than TTF1 in 1975. So this kind of studies um, an intervariability among the cell lines and spheroids gives us an idea of which spheroids you want to utilize for downstream drug study. 
In CRC, even though MSH2, MSH6, BRAP showed comparable signal, we saw a great uh, difference in the CK20 uh, expression in KM12 um, and, and HT29. Finally, we actually used the um, co-localization mask to look at the um, MSH2, MSH6 single and dual expression in CRC 3D spheroids. Here is an example of multiplex IF. In the middle panel, you see the segmentation, and in the last panel, you see the KM12. Um, um, you see the segmentation mask uh, of in the KM12 3D spheroids. In the graph, you can, we can clearly see that MSH2 expression was significantly higher in HD29 compared to KM12, even though the co-localization of MSH2 and MSH6 was higher in KM12 versus HD29. So in conclusion, we described the workflow of staining uh, assay optimization, imaging and image analysis for fluorescent multiplexing of 3D spheroid FFP of NSCLC and CRC cells. We utilize 3D spheroid because of its similarity with solid tumor tissue. We performed on discovery um, staining instrument using discovery reagent. The scanning filters um, adjusted to accommodate unique uh, discovery fluorescent dye. Multispectral imaging and, uh, and analysis were performed in Vectra 3 and INFORM from Akoya Biosciences. Potential use of fluorescent multiplexing technology in preclinical drug study using patient-derived 3D organoids um, could be done in future. Here are some of the important references that might help. We recently uh, published a paper on 3D spheroid staining in the Journal of uh, Cellular Biochemistry. There is a guide configure to configure Vectra 3 and inform platform um, for uh, Roche fluorophore in Akoya website. And of course, we have the white paper that describes in details how to develop an assay. We have to acknowledge an, a huge group of people here who played a significant role in making this project a success. Uh, Jean Boyer is an expert in, in our institute to build uh, 3D spheroids. Um, a lot of um, the people here actually helped in developing a chromogenic stain, uh, identifying um, um, biomarkers, sectioning tissues, and I can't thank them enough uh, for making this project a success. Thank you.